Hey there, we're back for more lecture notes from chapter one. I know it's exciting, but bear with me, would you? All right, so we're gonna move into section 1.2, and I'm just gonna give you a heads up now, and I'll talk about it later, but this one section in particular, I'm not gonna read everything to you, and you'll see why, because a lot of it's like paragraphs. So I'll let you pause the video and go read, and then come back and I'll highlight the important parts. Now, that don't worry about that right at the beginning. In the beginning, we wanna talk about the difference between observational studies versus designed experiments. Okay, now the book really focuses on those two, but I wanted to mention the other two that exist just as a heads up, and the book actually mentions this one anyway. A census. A census is a study that obtains data from every member of the population, every single person, every single entity, every single everything. Now, you can imagine that in real life, a census is not very practical. Um, cost, time, you basically just can't get everybody, even when you try. And that's the problem with the U.S. Census, which is as close to a um, demographic census as we get, but it's not a perfect census because we don't actually get every single person. We, I love how I say we, as if I'm part of the government, because the government doesn't actually talk to every single person or household because they actually do households but which okay but when you when you think of census you know that's what we're thinking of now some things it's easy to take a census of I mean for example if you're interested in a very small population I mean if all you're interested in is I don't know all the people that are in Congress right now well, there's only 435 of them. You could get a hold of every single one of them. I mean, it'd be tough, but you could do it. That kind of thing, all right? All right, then a sample survey is a study that obtains data from a subset of a population in order to estimate the population attributes. In other words, this is a little bit gray, but basically you send out some type of device that measures what people are thinking. You know, you could ask them questionnaires, you could call them on phone and say, hey, what are you thinking about the world? What do you think about, you know, president so-and-so or, you know, that kind of thing. So that's one thing. Um, and I, I, there are tons and tons and tons of examples of this. I mean, when you just go out and ask people what they're thinking, I mean, there's good samples of this, bad samples. I happen to be listening to a, um, podcast about Nielsen television ratings and essentially that's a sample survey they're not they're not observing people in their houses they put a little box on them on their tv and it observes what they watch right there's no control there's no nothing they just observe um there are groups and such but you know, every group doesn't guess, get a necessarily a treatment. People are just watching TV and the box is recording what people are watching, right? All right, let me type that up. Hold on. There we go. So the Nielsen box just attaches to the TV. It's recording what's happening. And again, Nielsen was just an example. I mean, pretty much any questionnaire you can think of, a lot of them, well, not any one of them, but a lot of them are simply sample surveys. All right, now, how is that different from an observational study? An observational study, um, like experiments, you're going to attempt to understand relationships. I mean, when you, when you watch Nielsen ratings, they really just want to know who's watching what. And they sort of want to know about age and demographics and such. But, you know, overall, they're not experimenting. And they're not trying to control for things. Other than to try to make sure that, you know, they get a wide variety of households and wide variety of ages and such. So in an observational study, the researcher is not able to control who gets the treatment and how they're assigned to the group. So for example, if you wish to study, um, to test whether lack of sleep reduces performance in class, you could just ask people how much they slept and then record how they did on the in-class exam. But it's not like you said you. Sally Q, you've got to sleep two hours, and you've got to sleep four hours, and you've got to sleep six hours, and then I'm gonna I'm not determining what ev amount of sleep everybody gets. I'm just asking them how much sleep they got, and then I'm determining whether or not that affects their in-class grade, which is why it's different than Nielsen ratings. I mean, Nielsen ratings, I'm not seeing how it affects anything. I'm just seeing what they do, right, how much they sleep, if you will, but I'm not seeing how it affects anything else, whereas an observational study, you want to see its effect on something else, or its relationship, I should say.